Semester. Um, for the lab initiative. Sorry, it's running a little late. Had some technical difficulties. But um, so last time we went over. Uh, so yeah, each lecture we just go over a specific topic for you guys that haven't been here before. Last lecture we went over lists. Um, so pretty much how to construct lists in Android. Um, let me see if I can get an example. Uh, once this thing loads, you should be able to see it. But pretty much a list is exactly what it sounds like. It's a bunch of rows. You can scroll on it. Um, you can click on uh, parts of the list. And, um, you know, it's exactly what it sounds like. So last time I went over um, kind of like the intro to lists. And I guess I'll uh, kind of just sort of do that real quick. So um, let me actually go uh, forward. Um, OK. So since this projector's down, I guess I'll just talk about it. So whenever you have a list, um, we are going to have uh, something called an adapter. And, um, and pretty much the adapter is the bridge between uh, your data and your list. So say I have a bunch of strings I want to um, represent. Say, uh, say I have um, all these states. The example that I did is I had um, all these states that I wanted to put in a list. Let's see if I can show you. Um, <clears throat> so, So yeah, so we're going over lists today. A list is pretty much just a representation of, um, you know, if you know what an array is, it's a rep representation of an array. It's a, um, you can have something that has a bunch of strings, um, and each row is a string. So you can uh, scroll on it. You know, you can do whatever you want on a list. It's just like a drop-down menu list or whatnot. So last time, uh, if we're looking at the code here, uh, last time pretty much I had these state names. And I just put them in a list that we can scroll up and down in. So in every list, we have, um, yeah, we have an adapter, which is which is this down here, um, which I talked about last time. And pretty much an adapter is, um, so you have your data, and then you have your list that you created. Um, and you want to merge them somehow. The adapter is how uh, the list knows how to represent the data. So. Um, for example, you have rows in a list, and maybe you just want the names of the states like I had before. Just simple strings, simple text on, um, on a list. I'll use an adapter to define exactly how I want the uh, information to look in each row, and then I just set the adapter to the list. Um, and I'll go over that once I just want to show you guys once um, this thing loads. But I'll go over that um, just quickly again. But so... Uh, an adapter, yeah, pretty much is, we can think of it as the bridge between the data and the uh, list itself. So then we also have these things called click listeners. And again, a click listener exactly um, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a little object that you put on your list, and it just waits for a click. It just keeps on, it doesn't do anything until, it, um, until the list is clicked. And when the list is clicked, uh, it runs this method here on item click. So we set up our click listener um, here. We make a click listener. And then here, when an item's clicked, we do uh, whatever's within the method, so within these two brackets. And so what I have here is that I just set the uh, something called title, which I'll show you guys um, in a second. And I just uh, change the text that's on title. So uh, I don't know if I've seen you guys at any of the Android lectures before. so. Um, have you been to any of the previous ones? No? No. Okay. So no big deal. I just, uh, I guess I'll just kind of go over exactly how Android's set up. So in Android, you have um, every screen. So, you know, on your app, when you, like, swipe and you s switch screens, each one of those is called an activity in Android. And so in Android, we have, uh, for each activity, we have a Java file and we have an XML file. So the XML file is how we want the uh, 
the screen to look. So for example, here I have um, an XML file and uh, I hit this thing graphical layout and it'll load um, what my screen will look like. And so here's where I define um, how I want my screen to look. And that's in a .xml file. This is the graphical representation of this code right here um, in this activity main.xml. So then once we build um, how we want our screen to look, we can go over to um, a Java file, which here is called mainactivity.java. And uh, this line right here, set content view, associates this Java file with um, this XML file. So pretty much the XML file is how we like the beauty of the Android, you know, how we want it to look, and then the Java file is kind of the brains behind it. That tells it what to do. Um, your app can't do anything without a Java file behind it. Um, and, you know, the view, what we have here in, in the uh, XML file, they can't do anything without being defined uh, or without having behaviors defined in uh, the Java file. So let's see this thing. Okay, so here's the sample app I made. This is the emulator, by the way. Um, you know, it comes with Eclipse, <coughs> the environment that I'm using. Uh, there's, if you just search online, like install Android development or whatnot, there's a ton of links on there on how to install it. But this emulator comes with it. So pretty much this is the list that I that I made. Um, as you can see, like that's a row, that's a row, that's a row. Those are called rows. And, and automatically the list scrolls. I didn't even um, need to define anything. That's just an attribute that it comes with. And so here's my title at the top um, in this piece of code. Uh, title, this text view, um, that's what this is, title, and then this, this is the list, I think I just call it list in here. So um, pretty much our first couple lectures go over the uh, more details of Java. I'm kind of just going to, uh, we're going to have a new format with the lectures, which I'm going to go over kind of like the general notation and whatnot, and then I'll have a lab activity that I'll make available to um, everyone. Um, so you can kind of like follow along at, on your own pace, um, you know, kind of just like a, like school, you go to a lecture and then you have a lab, so you can kind of get uh, a little more gritty with the code and whatnot. So last time I went over just how to make a list and the click listeners. So this time I'm going to go over making custom adapters. So here we have an adapter and, um, our inputs into the adapter is this, so the context of um, the application. And then here we have android.r.layout. This is a built-in XML file that Android gives you. It's just a default um, XML file that you can use for your adapter. Uh, I don't know if I can find it in here, but um, yeah, this, this is an XML file that will just talk about how each row should look. And then here we have this thing called state names. And if you remember, that's the array up here. So pretty much this is where the where the adapter is going to happen. This is what it's going to look like. And then this is the data. So that's how we um, create our adapter. Then if you see down here, I have list set adapter. That just means that my list view. So here, um, that just means that we're going to use this adapter right here. So let's make a new adapter. Any questions so far? I know if you if you haven't done Android before, um, this is kind of like this lecture is you know not like a beginning lecture, so it can definitely be a little confusing. Um, any questions at all? None. Okay. Anything you want to see specifically? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Here I made my adapter, and I need you input the uh, variables to it. So I'm going to use this, which again, this just refers to uh, kind of the Java file itself. Uh, that's called the context of Android. So it's um, the variable type is context. You don't really need to worry about exactly what it means. It's kind of like an abstract notion. It just means like uh, the adapter is going to take place in this. Um, in this activity. So then here, we're going to put our XML file name. But first, we have to make our XML file, and then we'll use the um, we'll use state names again. 
which again is this string variable up here. And so, yeah, we'll use state names. Um, so now we need to define, um, now we need to make a new adapter. So, let me cut these out just so they don't miss. Okay, so to make a new adapter, what, what we're going to need to do is go into this project is called List View Test 2, which is right here. First, we're going to need to make a new XML file. So to do that, we open up our project here to the left. We open up res, so that stands for resources, and then we go down and we open up layout. So this, this folder contains all the XML files that deal with the layouts for our, um, for our application. So we're going to do right click, go to new, and then um, Android XML file. So just give it a name, we'll say custom row uh, list view. So what I just did is we're creating a new um, a new XML file, and this is going to define how our rows are going to look in the list. So again, if we look here, all these rows, all they are just a simple, um, it's just text. It's just a string. So I guess, what should we do? I guess I'll just maybe add another text box to this. Um, you know, you can make it whatever you want. If, if we have enough time, maybe I'll put pictures on it. But once you get the basic notion, it's very easy to do, um, you know, without me having to show. So again, this is that um, that file that was like Android dot um, over here. This is that file Android dot R dot layout simple list item one. That just deals with um, that adapter. Just takes strings and just displays one text box pretty much. So now we're going to do one that um, has two text boxes and we're going to make it custom. So here. I'm just going to copy and paste this. So here we're going to create um, a new XML file that will, again, show how we want our rows to look. So I just copy and pasted from here um, just relative layout. I accidentally forgot to click um, relative layout when we were creating a new, um, a new XML file. And Android will just load this stuff already in there for you. But... Um, yeah, pretty much this just means that we're gonna our layout is gonna be relative. So I'm going to create a new text view. Um, and I have to give it uh, height and width requirements. So I give it height and width requirements, and then I um, also give it an ID. Um, and let's just call this uh, text box one or something. So what we're doing here is we're creating a new text box, and um, we're just uh, we just get, we just said how big we want it, how wide we want it, and wrap content just means um, and we don't really care, just fit all the text we have in here. So I'm gonna um, just put a text, put some text in here so we just know where it is. Um, so I'm gonna say text box one. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste just to save us a little time. I'm gonna close text box two, text box two. And then I'm just gonna put it to the right of text box one. Um, So here, I just created two text boxes, very simple, and um, if you look on our graphical, we have um, our two text boxes here. So that's what a row will look like. And uh, yeah, I can just, I guess, let me give it, I'll give it a little margin to the left. Um, so again, if you guys don't know what exactly I'm doing here, um, we have our other tutorials online, so just uh, I'm kind of freezing over this just because I almost I feel like I rehashed every time we have a lecture. Um, but so I'm just kind of breezing through this. But our first couple lectures go over you know exactly what I'm doing here. Um,
pretty much just a brief synopsis. I'm making a variable that's going to be text. It's called text view in Android, setting the length and the height. Um, I set an ID so I can access it later, and then I just give it um, a piece of text. And then here, I'm doing the same thing, and I'm giving it a new ID, and then I'm just saying, you know, put it to the right of this text view right here. So, and I, I give it a little margin, so I just give it a little space to the left. So here, um, text box one, text box two. It's not very pretty right now. I'm just trying to exemplify exactly what we're doing. But, um, you know, as I was saying before, once you guys get the basic idea, you don't like need me to spell out, you know, how to put an image in or whatnot. Pretty much, you define exactly how you want your row to look in here. You know, I can put in, um, it, I can put in an image. I can put in buttons. I can put in whatever I want. And um, now, what we're going to do is make a Java file to basically create the actual adapter and use this row that we created here um, to display the data that we have into our. Uh, into our application. So we use custom row list view. So what we're going to need to do now is um, we're going to create a new adapter. And to do that, again, it needs to be a Java file. So if we look, if we go to list view test two, and um, here we're again in the project explorer, we go to this thing called SRC right here. Um, that stands for source, and that's where all our source files are, so that's where all our Java files go. Um, here's our package. We don't really need to worry about what that is right now. That just kind of groups all the Java files together. And so we'll create a new Java file. If we right-click, we go to new, and then we go to class. So we're creating a new Java class, pretty much. Um, and we'll call this custom adapter. And we'll just hit finish. And... You're going to want to extend, let's see, oh. okay, that makes sense. Um, oopsies, what am I doing? Okay, so here we have our new class, custom adapter. So we want this adapter to pretty much be exactly like the adapter we were using before, and but we just want to change some of its properties. So what we're going to want to do, and if you guys have had a um, software class or had a, uh, a class on programming and you learned about inheritance, that's what we're doing right now. We're inheriting everything that um, this class array adapter has to offer. So... Um, and if you ever have this little red squiggly and you know you spelled it right, just hover over it and um, you have to go to import. So that just means that um, with this blank, when we make a new class or whatnot, it, it doesn't import any files. And each um, class you can inherit from is a library that you have to import. That's a cause of frustration for a lot because uh, people don't really, they think they're doing something wrong and they just haven't um, put in the libraries yet. So here we see that now we're, we're extending array adapter, and this, this part right here just means that our array adapter is going to be dealing with strings. So, um, so we're extending array adapter. That means that we're going to inherit all the properties that this class array adapter has. And that comes with Java. Java made the class um, array adapter, and it's going to have a bunch of different function, functions in it, or methods, if you know Java. Um, that's what they're called in Java, and then we're going to pretty much take everything Array Adapter has, and then we're going to kind of alter some of the stuff that we want to tailor it to our needs. So this thing called, uh, we need to make a constructor called Custom Adapter, um, and that will just create the adapter for us. So when we call Custom Adapter, it's going to run this method, the constructor, to set up um, our Custom Adapter variable. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is we can just choose any of these. And we can, um, we just want to have two string input variables. So uh, we're going to have state names, and we're going to have uh, city names. And actually, I need to make these uh, array um, inputs, not just single strings.
So again, um, <coughs> if you remember from here in our main activity, when we were creating, so main activity is the, uh, again, the brain system adapter that we're going to call within here. So if you see here, we have um, the line where we make our adapter before we made our adapter for this um, list right here. So here we had an adapter one, and then we said we want a new array adapter of type string, and we had these three inputs into it. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, and here we have, uh, it says super. Pretty much that means that it's calling its parent. It's calling its parent, um, which is the array adapter. So what we took all our methods from, um, or what we're extending, and it's going to create an array adapter. So um, this, this constructor, custom adapter, which is um, in here, it's the same thing as this thing called array adapter. It's just uh, it's creating a um, something of this type. OK, that was actually very confusing. Um, pretty much this custom adapter, uh, we need to call. So we need to first create an array adapter within the custom adapter, and then we're going to um, we're going to change the methods uh, in the array adapter. So that's what this line is doing right here. It's just um, creating an array adapter for us to then um, mutate into what we want it to be. So we're going to need to tell it what uh, what layout file we want. So we're going to do r dot uh, layout and what we call this custom row list view. Custom row list view. Okay, so we have our super, and we're, we're calling in the context. So context is, again, um, where this list is going to appear. Then here we're, gonna, we're saying that we're going to use this layout file that we just created, so with the two text boxes. And then this is the data that we're going to display. And then we're also going to have to um, tell this adapter to display um, what we want to display in the second text box. Because for now, it's just... Um, going to put stuff in the first text box for us. Okay. So, super. so then we're going to, um, again, if you guys have worked with classes, we're going to, um, so if you guys have worked with classes before, you know, we have things called like global variables. Um, so global variables are variables that exist throughout um, the entirety of uh, the class. So here I'm going to define um, some variables that uh, are part of this class. And then what we're going to do is we're going to assign these inputs to those variables so we can access them. Does that make sense at all? Yeah? OK. All right. So I'll call this the names, and I'll call it global or something, and then uh, string city names, global. Okay. So here we have our two string. Um, so we're going to also, so down here, what we're going to do is we're just going to say this. So this refers to, again, this class, um, and we're going to say we want state names global we want this variable to be um to be the input called state names and we're going to do the same thing with um state names uh oh, city names so then we're going to do city names global and we're going to want that to be the input called city names now we're also going to have a context variable um and we're going to call it and again, a context variable is kind of hard to describe. It's not, um, you know, a string, you can just say it's a text, it's characters. An integer is obviously an integer. Um, but a context kind of is, is a little more of an abstract notion. The way I kind of think about context is that, um, I guess, for example, this lecture, its context would be the room, because we're doing this lecture inside the room. So we can kind of think, um, you know, the context in this in this point is going to be we have our list and it's within um, our activity or the screen pretty much that we're using. So um, that's what we can think of the context as. 
it is a little hard to think about um, exactly what it might mean, and um, you know, you kind of just have to bear with me, and uh, and it'll kind of, you know, it's one of those things that I can't exactly describe what is it what it is, but if you start coding with Android, you'll kind of get a feel for what it is. Um, so there we go, the second context. Okay. Um, so now we're going to use this method called get view. So public, or actually, I think we were trying to. Um, so this thing called get view um, is every time that we load the uh, every time we load the list. So in here in our main activity, we create the array adapter. So pretty much that's what we're doing right now. And then here we have set adapter. An adapter, we use this adapter up here. So when this file loads on um, on Android, it's going to uh, it's going to see, okay, we're using this adapter, adapter one. So what we're going to need to do is go into um, pretty much its Java file. So what we're creating here, it's going to look for a method called get view. And um, what what's called it's called inflating in Android, and pretty much that just means um, it's going to go through every single row. So for every uh, piece of data we want to represent, it's going to get that data. It's going to get what we want our row to look like, and then it's pretty much going to inflate the row or create the row. So um, for example, in, uh, in here, what it did is when we said, OK, we want this certain adapter, it went through and it, used, it looked for this method in the array adapter class called get view, and it basically created this view. So it um, assigned you know, the text to um, the text box, and pretty much that was it, just because it's a simple, um, it's a simple adapter. But uh, it just went through and created every single row individually. So that's what we're doing right now with this. Um, so, oh, oops, he's wrong one. Um, so we're going to need, so again, we need to import this library called view, just because we don't have it yet. Um, and so get view. Um, we are going to want to use, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, so yeah, get view, we're going to need um, a position. So our first input to this get view method is going to be the position that, um, for the row. So again, in here, it went through, you know, this would be position 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, it got the position. It gets the... Uh, so this is going to be another kind of an abstract thing. This is called a view variable. And so a view variable uh, refers to um, anything in Android that can be considered uh, a view. And I guess that's kind of circular uh, logic the way I'm describing it. But for example, here we have these things called text views, um, list view. So all these, all these uh, kind of objects that we create in our um, in our XML file, they're called views. And so that's how Android refers to them. They're just containers. Um, they pretty much just, uh, each one has different attributes. They look different, but they're all called views. And so when we use a view variable, it just means that we're not using a specific type of view, that we're just importing a view. Or so in this case, um, inputting a view. So um, it's kind of like the parent to all these other views below it. So like text view, a list view, um, there's a, something called a button, you know, anything that um, is a view or an object that we can create our XML file, we can refer to as a view. So then here we're going to use view group parent. And so we don't really need to worry about what this is. Um, we don't really use it. Pretty much it just imports the parent of the view as well. So this this stuff. Um, uh, no, okay. Yeah. So this stuff is we we're not going to really worry about this stuff so much. Pretty much, this is the view that we're going to return, or the view um, that we're inputting. So it's what the row looks like before we um, inflate it, or before we assign how we want it to look. So um, I guess I'll go through the code and we'll kind of figure out um, what each one does. So what I'm doing right now is I'm creating a uh, layout inflator. And as I was saying before, um, it, 
inflating in Android just means um, actually creating the view. So we tell it how we want to look, and we can kind of think it's inflating it from nothing into something concrete. So inflator, and then we're going to do um, and inflate. So this line is going to look a little confusing, but uh, yeah, flavor service. But context. Uh, oh. So again, we need to import the layout in Flavor Library. Let's not go exactly what this or go over exactly what this line means. We'll kind of take it for granted. But pretty much, um, what it's saying is that it's. Uh, we're making a thing called a layout inflator, it's taking the context, so uh, what we assigned over here, and it's just um, getting, it's pretty much asking for um, permission for us to inflate stuff to return to uh, the context. So here, this is the context, because we're going to be calling the array adapter in this thing called main.activity.java. Um, so we're inputting the context like we did here. This is the context, so we're inputting this main activity into here, and we're saying, um, can we uh, lay out some views to put into your um, context? That's kind of what it means in uh, layman's term. So pretty much now what we're going to do is we're going to do view. Um, we're just uh, in plain. So we're going to use this thing called inflator to inflate views. And again, inflate means to just create a concrete, um, a concrete object. So, so a row, um, you know, is a view in itself. And right now, we just have the information. We have how we want it to look, and the inflator is going to combine those and actually make what we want, um, what we want. So we're going to use this inflator, and we're going to inflate. Oops, I spelled this wrong. And we're going to inflate um, our the, the layout. So this that whole custom row that we did, so custom row list view, and then we're going to do uh, So what this is just doing is we're creating a, again, we're creating a view, um, and this is called row view. So we're inflating uh, what we made here. So we're returning, we're pretty much returning a little row of this. And um, we're storing it in this variable called row view that we're going to start um, setting uh, what we want the text in here to be. So we're going to do, um, we're going to have, we're going to get our uh, text views. So, uh, okay. so, um, So if you've come to previous Android lectures, you probably have seen this line right here. Um, but so this thing, text view, uh, again, before when I was showing you guys the, um, the XML file, I guess let me show it to you again. So we're working with the, um, this, uh, this XML file right here that we created. We're, this is how every, we want every row to look. So again, in here I created these variables called text view which are um, these two things right here, um, and we can put text in them. And so text view is the variable type. So here, I'm saying, OK, in Java, I'm saying I want to have a text view variable. I'm going to call it state text, and then I'm going to use this um, method. It's pretty much called just find view by ID, which just means that when I call this on the row view, so that's why it's row view dot find view by ID, it's going to go into row view. Um, which is this variable that we made right here. So referring to this um, layout file. So we have a row view, and we're saying, hey, we want to go into row view, or custom row list view, since we defined it right here. And we want to look for this thing that has an ID called textbox1. And then we want to um, attach it to this variable. So when we reach this line in the code, it's going to go into this XML file, and it's going to look, it's going to scan, and it's going to find this um, text view, 
because it has the ID that we were looking for, and then it's going to return it and just um, assign it to this thing called state text. So now this state text variable pretty much controls this text view right here. And we're going to do that again. I'm just going to copy and paste um, because we're doing the same exact thing. Um, and we're going to want to have our uh, place that we're going to put our city text in. And that was in text box 2. So that's this ID right here, text box 2. So now we have two variables that um, control the two text um, views that we had in our XML file. And then what we're going to want to do is we're just going to pretty much assign what we want their text to be. So again, I'm, I'm going to refer to this um, text view variable called state text, and I'm going to use, I'm going to set it to text. And I'll go over that line in a second. I'll just, um, again, I'm going to do the same thing with city text. And I'm going to use the variable set text to set the text. So here I have set text, but I don't have any inputs yet. So it's not setting it to anything. It doesn't know what to set it to. What I'm going to want to do is um, use this, again, if you remember, when we created the custom adapter. So when we created an instance of this class, we inputted state names and city names. And we haven't used them yet. So this is where they come into play. What we want to do is we want to take the text view that we want to have the states on. So we find it in the XML file here. And then we, have, we attach it to a variable so we can manipulate it. And then here we're taking that variable that we return and we're setting the text. And we want the text um, to be uh, coming from our array called state means global, which we assigned up here as to be um, the input when we create the instance of this custom adapter. And we want it to uh, again, it's an array, so we have a bunch of um, different indexes that we can use, and we want to use the position of the row. So, uh, uh, state names is spelled wrong. Is it? Oh, geez. That's why. Yeah, also, um, what exactly is uh, activity underscore context? Okay, so yeah, um, so kind of tried to go over this earlier, and it's definitely a very vague concept. But the context, um, it's, a, it's a type of variable that kind of deals with, um, it's just hard to put into words. It's, it deals with kind of the realm, kind of the arena that we're working within. So um, it's not something that you're creating, is it? No. Oh, no, no, no. So context is automatically generated by um, Android. Like, I don't need to make the context or anything. As we can see here in um, this thing called mainactivity.java, which is kind of the, uh, the brains behind our application right now, um, when we call this adapter, this is the context input. So it's just this. Um, you know, if you haven't worked with Java before or um, and haven't used this before, this is just referring to itself. So it's saying, I'm putting myself into adapter one. So the context of main activity is going into uh, adapter one so that it knows kind of in what space it's working in. Um, it's a little abstract, probably didn't explain it the best, um, but that's actually a good question. I should um, I should look up the exact definition for it. So it's something that the system keeps track of that you don't really have to worry about, you just have to reference it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So context is kind of, um, yeah, I don't need to create a context at all. It's kind of automatically generated. It's like it comes with, you know, uh, creating a class or whatnot. Like custom row list view is something you created that's an XML file that, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. specified, but yeah. it could be context is not. Yeah, that's actually a great point. I didn't even think of that. Context is, it is automatically generated by, um, by Android, pretty much, um, by the files themselves. So I can reference, I can be like, get application context, and it'll return that's a method or whatnot, um, you know, it'll return the, the context of the application. But again, I don't need to create a context um, variable. It's kind of already there. Um, so just to finish up, we're going to use the same sort of logic. Does that logic make sense while we're using position in the array, state names and city names? Um, you know, it's kind of just uh, iterating through every single row, and it's only going to, like, 
Oh, so for our first position, so position zero, we want to access the first element in the um, array, state names global and city names global. And when we go on to the next row, we want to access done. Um, we've created our rows. Are we uh, inflated our XML file? We got the text views that are part of the XML file in here. And then we um, set the text that we want for those uh, text views. So now what we have to do is this thing, get view, returns a thing called variable view. So oh, here's kind of a visual indicator of drivers and stuff operation. Okay, that's kind of big. But so what we need to do now is um, we had this object called view. We manipulated it here. Um, and now we need to return our new view. So we're going to just use the line, return um, row view. So kind of um, a nod to what Habib was saying, that this, this method, get view, we don't have to call it manually. It's something that automatically happens when um, Android is setting up the environment that we're working in. So, um, so it's kind of like when you have a Java file or you know, a C++ file and you um, you use main, you have the method main, that, that automatically happens when you run it. You don't have to say, okay, start main. Main is um, something that automatically happens when you run like a job file. So again, here, this method get view automatically happens when um, we're setting up our list. So when we set the adapter here. Okay, so let's pray that this works. Um, so we'll save this, put some adapter. So we're going to, I'm going to comment out this, and I'm going to create a new adapter. Um, so again, we're going to make an adapter that's going to be of type custom adapter, which is the thing that we just made. So we're referring to this class, and we'll call it adapter2. We're going to do new, so we're creating a new instance of this class, and we're going to do new custom adapter. And again, when we uh, when we're using this thing, new custom adapter, we're calling pretty much this method here, custom adapter. So we need to input the context and then our two um, string arrays. So we're going to input the context of the application. So this, and then our two string arrays, which I had created previously. So state names and city names. And I know that they don't match up. I was just thinking of states and cities, um, like. Boston is not in New York. Um, so, settings. so here we created our new adapter. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just set, actually, let me make this adapter two a little better. And we're going to make this adapter two. And so now if we run this, uh, Let me get rid of this, these, uh, sorry, this is my um, I'm getting rid of this click, these click listeners just so um, they, they won't impact our new, uh, what we just did. I don't know how they work with, uh, I made those last time and um, I don't know if they all mess up loading this new uh, thing with this custom adapter. But so um, what we just did is create a new adapter and now, um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. This all. We'll run this again. It's uploading it. Hmm. Oh, it's already told me to. Uh, let me click out of here and let me just run this emulator again. So um, I know it's kind of the end of our lecture, kind of trying to cram everything in. Does anyone have, um, hold on, I'm going to just restart if you have some time to just use up. Does anyone have any questions at all? Um, anything, any questions? Did everything make sense? Anything you want me to go over um, kind of in a broad sense? Uh, so it's clear where you know state names are going to be. We had that last time, mm -hmm. but then uh, you're also displaying city names. Yeah. So, like, where's that going to show up? And specify it. Yeah. So, um, so last time I just made uh, these two strings.
string arrays just for the sake of time. I've pre-made them called state arrays and city names, and they should have the same number of elements. And so uh, we created this custom row. So this XML file over here, let's just load. Um, we created this custom row from an XML file. And what basically what we have here is we named this text text box one, and this is text box two. And in that method get view, we said that we want text box view to have the state names, and we want text box uh, two to have the city names. So if I run the emulator here, you should see that. So Eclipse is a very funky program. Uh, sometimes you just gotta just stop it and restart it. But um, so is anything not clear at all? I know I kind of uh, you know you could I could spend hours doing this and um, you know explaining this stuff. Hopefully I got the general concepts um, across to you. I guess I'll just to recap. We're creating a list which is. Um, which is a default view that Android gives us. And what we did last time was we just talked about how we actually set up the list, how we give it data, and how we can use uh, um, built-in adapters to display the data. And then today we covered um, creating custom adapters, inflating our views within our custom adapters, and then um, how we assign those custom adapters to uh, our list that we want to use. So let's hope that the emulator works. Well, I'm getting an error for some reason um, that my emulator connection is down. I <laughs> don't know why it happened. Uh, so I guess the, the lecture's over. That's pretty much everything I'm covering. Um, I'm going to just fix this real quick, but if you have some place to go, um, you know, feel free to leave, I guess. Um, any questions? I already asked, but I think you're out of the room. You got any questions at all? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so yeah, so there should be a lab coming out soon. I um, I have the lab from last week, and um, I think I'll release that as one part, and then I'll release the second part as a lab kind of going over what we did today. So um, the lab's gonna be a little more hands-on. Uh, it's kind of be like a tutorial that you find online, kind of catered to what we went over in our lecture. So I think those will be on uh, the Google Drive. Does that make sense to put them Yeah, on? so uh, I shared with everyone whose email I have, uh, GAI club members, if you look on the Google Drive and you go on there, share with me, you'll see uh, GAI club members, and there should be a bunch of stuff on Android, design, iOS, and I'll put everything that Kevin is going to give you on, under like lecture material or Android material, and then you should be able to access everything that he's doing and everything like uh, this lab. And it'd be really useful like whenever you're learning something new, you learn more by doing than by watching or anything else, or listening to someone else talk about it. So try it yourself, it's not that bad. There's a ton of resources online, and this is just supposed to motivate you guys to learn and see that it can be done, you know, pretty quickly once you know what you're doing. So uh, I think maybe we'll uh, take a little bit of a break if you wanna come up and ask questions, or um, take a five minute break, and then we'll start off with design, and then that'll go until one. So, yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Beep said, I always try to stress um, going over this stuff. You know, I already know what I'm doing when I come in. And um, so I might not uh, kind of convey that information enough to you guys. So, um, if you do have any questions, I'll be here for like 10 minutes after. And again, Android is, you know, if you know Java, you know, Android will be a cinch for you. If you don't know Java, Android's very easy as well. Um, Pretty much this stuff may be confusing, you know, uh, kind of glossed over some things that I'd covered previously, but I really recommend either watching the first lecture um, or which is online, or you can, um, you know, just look up the tutorials. Android's very easy to get into. You don't need a Mac or Windows specifically. Um, you know, you can run it on any computer. It's great. Um, and I think Android is, you know, the biggest operating system out there um, currently, so, or for mobile phones. So it's a great it's a great resource to know, and it is pretty easy. You know, this stuff may seem new or or not sure what it means, um, 
But you know, even after working for a couple hours, it'll make sense. It's like anything, it's going to be very difficult at first, but then once you get past that first little hump, everything's kind of just going to um, be, the process is going to be expedited. So, so yeah, it looks like I'm not going to be able to run the emulator for whatever reason. Um, Eclipse is a very buggy program. As you can see, the emulator was working like a little bit ago, and now I can't connect to like my emulator. So, um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll be here after for like 10 minutes if you have any questions.